Since its debut over a century ago, the FBI has included over 500 people on its most wanted fugitives list. Of these 500 criminals, only 11 have been women. Some of these women have risen to the top of the criminal world, and some others were victims of their own hubris. Whatever the reasons, these 11 women have earned their place as some of the most notorious criminals in history. Ruja Ignatova. Ruja Ignatova, a Bulgarian-born German citizen and founder of OneCoin, a fraudulent cryptocurrency scheme dubbed by the Times as one of the biggest scams in history. With the growth of technology and improvement in technological know-how, it's becoming incredibly difficult to defraud people, especially on a large scale. However, with credentials like Dr. Ruja's, it is not impossible to see how the Oxford-trained businesswoman with a PhD in private international law could pass as a verifiable authority in the cryptocurrency, enabling her to defraud people across the globe of over $4 billion. A scam so successful, it would eventually become the subject of a book, a podcast episode, and an episode in a YouTube series. Following the unprecedented rise and success of cryptocurrency, the self-proclaimed Crypto Queen started OneCoin in 2014, a type of digital currency she claimed worked like other types of cryptocurrency. Buyers could mine the coin, use it to make payments, and even own an online wallet. Although OneCoin would eventually become what Dr. Ruja Ignatova would would be globally recognized for. Her criminal history dates back to 2012, when she was convicted of fraud in Germany and served a suspended sentence of 14 months imprisonment. In 2013, she was also part of a multi-level marketing scheme known as Bigcoin. At the peak of its commercial success, OneCoin had become a global brand with investors from over a dozen countries. In June 2016, the crypto queen, who was 36 years old at the time, walked on stage at the Wembley Arena in front of a screaming crowd of thousands of loyal investors, where she proclaimed in a fiery speech that one coin was the Bitcoin killer and concluded emphatically by stating that in two years, nobody will speak about Bitcoin anymore. However, in October 2017, less than a year after that powerful Wembley declaration, Ruja Ignatova, who was scheduled to speak in Lisbon, Portugal, did not show up and has not been seen to date. Reports claim that the 42-year-old went underground after being tipped off about a district court in the United States issuing a warrant for her arrest, causing her to flee to Greece and disappear forever. In March, 2019, the FBI and Interpol arrested her brother, Konstantin Ignatov, who pleaded guilty to money laundering and fraud in connection to the OneCoin scheme. The U.S. authorities also charged Dr. Ruja in absentia for security fraud, wire fraud, and money laundering. In 2022, the German Federal Criminal Police Office announced that Dr. Ruga was wanted for fraud charges, offering a 5,000 euros reward for any information that could lead to an arrest. Soon after, an Interpol red notice followed, and she was consequently put on Europol's most wanted list. Later that year, in a joint press conference with the IRS and United States Attorney's Office, Southern District of New York, the FBI added Ignatova to its 10 most wanted fugitives list. There's currently a $250,000 reward for any information leading to her arrest. Ruth Eisenman Shear. As a people, we are inclined to celebrate most of our first milestones in various aspects of our lives. Similarly, we are primed to celebrate individuals and institutions that push boundaries and are trailblazers in their fields. But I can't imagine that being the first woman on the FBI Most Wanted list is one of those things to be celebrated. That honor belongs to Honduras-born Ruth Eisenman Shear, who was added to the list in 1968, 10 years after the infamous list was created. Her crime? Kidnapping 20-year-old Barbara Jean Mackle, a student of Emory University and daughter of Robert Mackle, an American millionaire and land developer who was reported to be close to the then-president-elect Richard Nixon. Shortly before her Christmas break in 1968, there was an outbreak of the Hong Kong flu at the university where young Barbara studied, causing her to contract the illness. As a result, her mother Jane drove up to the school and took a room at an inn near the campus to ensure she could take care of her. After learning that the school's infirmary was full, Jane took her sick daughter to her room at the Roadway Inn in Decatur, unbeknown to them that their lives were about to become something straight out of a Hollywood crime mystery flick. At about 3 a.m. on December 17, 1968, two male police officers knocked on Jane's motel room. The officers, who would later be identified as Ruth Eisenman Shear and Gary Stephen Christ, her boyfriend and convicted criminal, announced that there had been an accident involving a white Ford, the type of car that Barbara's boyfriend, Stuart Hunt Woodward, drove at the time. Jane unsuspectingly unhooked the latch on the door, and the two officers forced their way into the room, brandishing weapons. The assailants chloroformed, gagged, 
gagged and bound Jane before abducting Barbara, forcing her into the getaway Volvo that was parked outside. The criminal couple then took her to a remote location in Gwinnett County, where with the aid of chloroform, they forced Barbara into a box made of fiberglass buried in a shallow hole somewhere in the forest. They had modified the fiberglass box to allow Barbara to breathe and stocked it with food and water laced with chloroform while they waited for her father to pay a ransom of $500,000. Before absconding with the ransom money, the kidnappers gave vague directions to Barbara's burial spot, where she was found 83 hours after she was kidnapped. On December 28, 1968, the FBI named Ruth Eisman Shear as one of the 10 most wanted people for her role in the abduction of Barbara Mackle. On March 5th the following year, a couple of months after being indicted for kidnapping, Ruth Eisman Shear, living under the alias Donna Sue Wills, was arrested in Oklahoma when she applied for a nursing role, and the system flagged her fingerprints. Two months later, she pleaded guilty to all the charges against her and was consequently sentenced to seven years imprisonment. She would later be granted parole after four years on the condition that she returned to her home country of Honduras. Marie Dean Arrington. In 1969, Marie Dean Arrington, age 36, became the second woman ever placed on the FBI 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list. Although she was finally arrested in 1971, Marie Dean Arrington was no stranger to the law and had been arrested for unrelated charges throughout the years. At 23, Marie Dean worked as a maid at a motel scrubbing floors for 75 cents an hour when she got the idea that she could make a lot more money if she robbed the motel instead. So, she planned and robbed her boss, after which she tied herself to a chair and claimed she was a victim of the robbery. However, her penchant for smoking would eventually become her undoing. The police officers noticed cigarette butts around where she was tied and asked how she could smoke if she were indeed bound throughout the ordeal, and she failed to provide a satisfactory answer. Her first conviction, however, came in 1964 for killing her husband, Lester Arrington. Her defense of self-defense and the prosecution's inability to find the murder weapon ensured that she was only convicted of manslaughter and and sentenced to 20 years imprisonment. According to multiple reports, Marie Dean Arrington lived a life of crime with an extensive criminal record ranging from forgery at the age of 22, assault at age 23, larceny and robbery at 24, passing bad checks at 28, to vehicle theft at age 31. She would eventually end up on the FBI's most wanted fugitives list at age 36 for the murder of 37-year-old Vivian June Ritter, the secretary to Bob Pierce, a lawyer in Florida. Bob Pierce was a public defender who had unsuccessfully tried to defend both Marie Dean's children. Her son, Lloyd, was sentenced to life imprisonment, and her daughter was sentenced to jail for her crimes. In April of 1968, Marie Dean, out on bail after being convicted of manslaughter, angrily stormed into Bob Pierce's office in Orlando. Fortunately for him, he was not there. Unfortunately, June was, and Marie Dean kidnapped her. June's unrecognizable body was discovered three days later in the woods. She had been shot multiple times and run over repeatedly with her own car. Marie Dean was apprehended, convicted, and sentenced to death for first-degree murder in December of 1968. The jail bars did not hold Marie Dean for long. On March 1, 1969, Marie Dean Arrington escaped from the Lowell Correctional Institution Annex in Marion County, Florida. Reports claim that she cut a window screen, squeezed through the hole, hopped over two wire fences in her pajamas, and fled to New Orleans, where she began a new life as a waitress. She remained on the run for a couple of years before she was eventually captured in 1972 and sent back to the Lowell Correctional Institution Annex. Although she was initially given the death penalty, her punishment was reduced to a life sentence when the death penalty was deemed unconstitutional. She remained in the Lowell Correctional Institution Annex in Marion County, Florida, where she committed up to 61 criminal violations until her death in 2014. Angela Yvonne Davis. More than 500 men and women have been put on the FBI Most Wanted Fugitives list since its inception. Of these infamous men and women, Angela Yvonne Davis is probably the most famous person on the list and one of the few with a seemingly positive story. Angela Yvonne Davis, now a 79-year-old professor and renowned author, was placed on the FBI's Most Wanted list in August 1970 after she was charged in connection with a hostage situation in a court in California that claimed the life of a judge. In her youth, Angela Angela actively participated in the civil rights movement and the second wave feminist movement. She was a core member of the Black Panther Party and Communist Party of America, making her a government target. She became very popular in 1969 after being appointed a professor of philosophy at the University of California and was subsequently fired for her involvement with the Communist Party. She was rehired after a court ruled the firing illegal, but was fired again for the use of inflammatory language. However, her life was about to become much more complicated. In August of 19. 
1970, Angela was forced to become a fugitive of the law after being charged with aggravated kidnapping and murder in the first degree. What had happened was, on August 7, 1970, a heavily armed Jonathan Jackson, the brother of one of the accused on trial that day, walked into the Marin County Courthouse, gave some of the guns to two of the defendants, took some hostages, and attempted to help the defendants escape. In the shootout that transpired as they attempted to escape, a judge, two of the defendants, and Jonathan Jackson were killed. Investigations revealed that some of the weapons used in the courthouse had been purchased by Angela Davis, including the shotgun that killed Judge Harold Haley. Although she was not at the crime scene, the grand jury charged Angela with conspiracy, kidnapping, and murder. On August 14, 1969, two weeks after the court hostage situation, a warrant was released for Angela's arrest. On August 18, four days after the warrant, FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover placed her on the most wanted fugitive list. Angela would later detail her experience in her 1974 autobiography, explaining that she had to change her appearance, hide in different places, and move around at night. Her arrest on October 13, 1970, sparked a movement dedicated to her release. The Free Angela Davies movement became a big and successful campaign with support from music legends such as John Lennon, Yoko Ono, and the Rolling Stones. In 1972, Angela Yvonne Davis was found not guilty of all charges against her by an all-white jury after a 13-hour deliberation. Bernardine Ray Dorn Born on January 12, 1942, Bernardine Ray Dorn was a co-founder and former leader of Weather Underground, a far-left violent militant organization in the United States. The group was responsible for several attacks in the late 60s and early 70s, including bombings of the Pentagon, the U.S. Capitol, and numerous police stations in New York. The Weatherman group was also responsible for the Greenwich Village townhouse explosion that killed three of its members, an explosion that would make Bernardine Ray Dorn a fugitive from the law, hiding in Chicago and San Francisco. Francisco for 11 years. Before creating the Weather Underground, Bernardine was a self-proclaimed revolutionary communist and an active member of the Students for a Democratic Society, a left-wing communist revolutionary organization. Her activist lifestyle and communist affiliations caused her to have a few run-ins with the law, but her work as a leader in the Weather Underground would give her a spot on the FBI Most Wanted list for several years before she was removed in December 1972. On August 22, 1969, Bernardine Ray Dorn Dorn was arrested and charged with possession of illicit drugs, but the charges were dropped after the defense proved that the police conducted an illegal search of the car. Her hit and miss encounters with the police would continue for a few months until November 21, 1972, when the United States Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit dropped all charges against her on the basis the judge was biased in his refusal to permit defense attorneys to screen prospective jurors for racial and cultural bias. On October 14, 1970, the FBI placed Bernardine Ray Dorn on the 10 most wanted fugitives list due to the increasing volatility of the Weather Underground group. She was subsequently taken off the list in December 1973 after District Judge Damon Keith dismissed the charges against her. About a month after she was taken off the list, Judge Julius Hoffman dismissed the four-year-old case against some members of the Weather Underground, including Bernardine, for her role in the riotous Days of Rage. In 1980, Bernardine Ray Dorn and Bill Ayer, her husband and co-founder of the Weather Underground, came out of hiding and turned themselves in. Although some of the charges against her had been dismissed due to prosecutorial misconduct, she was put on probation after pleading guilty to misdemeanor charges of bail jumping and aggravated battery. She was, however, sentenced to seven months imprisonment after being held in contempt of a grand jury for refusing to testify in an armed robbery case against ex-weatherman Susan Rosenberg. Donna Jean Wilmot you would think that after the leaders of the Weatherman Underground, Bernardine and Bill, turned themselves in, other members of the radical group would find legal ways to express their dissatisfaction with the government. But was that the case? Absolutely not. In 1985, five years after Bernardine and Bill turned themselves in, Donna Jean Wilmot and her accomplice Claude Daniel Marks became fugitives of the law after the authorities uncovered their plan to blow up a maximum security prison. Reports claim that the pair plotted the explosion in an attempt to free Oscar Lopez, a leader of the Fuerzas Armadas de Liberación Nacional, a Puerto Rican separatist organization known for violence. However, a wrench was thrown in their plans after Claude purchased 37 pounds of fake explosives from an undercover FBI agent. After discovering the listening device planted in their vehicle by the FBI, Donna and Claude knew it was time to run for it. They and their families fled their homes and went into hiding. In May 1987, Donna Jean Wilmot and Claude Daniel Marks were both placed on the FBI. FBI 
FBI's Most Wanted list, becoming the first male and female duo to be included on the infamous list. Donna Jean Wilmot became Joe Elliott and lived in the small neighborhood of Squirrel Hill in Pittsburgh with her husband and daughter Zoe. To their unsuspecting neighbors, they were a small, loving family. To the neighborhood, Joe Elliott was a loving mother, a loyal friend, and an active voice in the community who worked with children infected with AIDS. From her interest in radical politics to eventually making the FBI Most Wanted list, Donna and Claude appeared to have been greatly inspired by the lives of Bernardine Ray Dorn and Bill Ayers. Like their radical leaders before them, Donna Jean Wilmot and Claude Daniel Marks lived as fugitives for nine years before eventually turning themselves into the authorities in December of 1994. Reports claim that the pair got tired of looking over their shoulders and after almost one year of negotiations, decided to turn themselves in. In a statement released by their lawyers, they said, first challenge to activism by the movements of the 60s, both of us have spent all our adult lives working to change the injustices that are a part of the very fabric of society. In May of the following year, Donna Jean Wilmot was imprisoned for three years, while Claude Daniel Marks got six years for his larger role in the plan. Chante L. Henderson, it would be another 20 years after the listing of radical extremist Donna Jean Wilmot before another woman would earn a spot on the FBI Most Wanted Fugitives list. The then 29-year-old Shantae L. Henderson, who served the shortest time on the list, was placed on the list for a record-breaking one day as she was arrested on March 31, 2007 for the murder of DeAndre Parker in 2006, the same day she was put on the list. Already notorious as one of the leading members of the 12th Street Gang, Shantae was allegedly connected to at least 50 gang related shootings and five other murders. She, however, denied these accusations in a trial and was not convicted due to lack of evidence. In September of 2006, she allegedly shot and killed 21-year-old DeAndre Parker execution style while he was in his truck at the convenience store with his girlfriend. When she learned that she was a suspect in the murder, she fled and went underground. In a classic example of a leopard's inability to change its spots, Shantae could not and did not stay hidden for long. Shantae allegedly came out of hiding briefly to incite a spate of gang wars where she apparently ordered the killing of gang members who testified against Steve Wright, her mentor and notorious kingpin. Sources also claim she may have been on a mission to avenge her sisters, who were killed in drive-by shootings. She was eventually apprehended in Kansas City and charged with murder. During the trial, she claimed self-defense, alleging that DeAndre Parker tried to run her over with his truck. Her defense was enough to acquit her of the murder charges, but she was given probation for her manslaughter charge and sentenced to three years in prison for armed criminal action. In a decision that he would eventually regret, Judge Robert Schieber, who granted her probation, stated that he gave her every benefit of the doubt. Less than a year after she was released in 2010, she was arrested at a traffic stop for illegal possession of a firearm, to which she pleaded guilty. The once lenient Judge Robert Schieber sentenced her to 10 years for violating her parole. He also ordered the 10-year sentence to run consecutively with an additional 7-year sentence for illegally possessing a firearm. She served her 7 years at the Federal Correctional Institution, Waseca. After she was released, from federal prison in 2017, Shantae L. Henderson was sent to the Women's Eastern Reception, Diagnostic and Correctional Center in Vandalia, Missouri, where she's scheduled for release in 2027. Brenda Delgado. Love is blind, and lovers cannot see, the pretty follies that themselves commit, were the words of the great William Shakespeare in his book, The Merchant of Venice, and it perfectly explains the crime of passion that landed Miss Brenda Delgado on the FBI's 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list. The story, which seemed like the plot of a terrible telenovela show, follows the story of a sordid love triangle that saw Brenda conspire to kill her ex-lover's new girlfriend and then escape to Mexico. At the time of the crime, Brenda Delgado, who would come to be known as the Jilted Lover, was a 34-year-old dentist hygiene student who dated Ricardo Paniagua, a dermatologist, for two years before they broke up. After the split, Ricardo Paniagua started dating Kendra Hatcher, a pediatric dentist in Dallas. To add insult to injury, in September 2015, Brenda learned that her ex-lover had introduced his new girlfriend to his family, and the couple planned a romantic trip to Cancun. Enraged, the jilted lover reportedly used money and drugs to secure the services of Christopher Love, a hitman, to murder Kendra Hatcher in her apartment complex. The suspected hitman seen on this surveillance camera leaving the scene was promised drugs in exchange for killing Hatcher. Known by the press as the Jilted Lover, Delgado fled to Mexico after the killing, but Mexican authorities, working in conjunction with the FBI, tracked her down and brought her in.
Brenda offered the same bribe of drugs and money to her other accomplices, including Crystal Coates, a 21-year-old dental assistant who told authorities she received $1.500 to drive the getaway car. Police investigations uncovered a security tape that caught Brenda's Jeep Cherokee on camera fleeing the crime scene. According to the FBI, after she was interviewed and questioned, Brenda Delgado fled to Mexico, where she lived as a fugitive for half a year before being put on the FBI Most Wanted Fugitives list in April 2016. On April 8, 2016, two days after she appeared on the Most Wanted list, authorities apprehended Brenda Delgado in Coahuila, a city in northern Mexico. After her arrest, she spent five months in a Mexican prison before she was extradited to the United States in October of that same year on the condition that the state would not seek the death penalty. Prosecutors, however, filed a motion to argue the death penalty against her, but it proved unsuccessful. In October 2018, hitman Christopher Love was sentenced to death, and getaway driver Crystal Cortez was sentenced to 35 years in prison for their role in the plot to murder Miss Kendra Hatcher. In October 2021, Brenda Delgado was found guilty of murder and is currently serving a life sentence. Shanika S. Minor. Prior to Dr. Ruja Ignatova in 2017, the 24-year-old Shanika Minor was the most recent woman to earn a spot on the FBI's Most Wanted Fugitives list. Wisconsin-born Shanika Minor made the Most Wanted list in June 2017 for allegedly killing a pregnant woman and her unborn baby for disrespecting her, Shanika family. The victim, 23-year-old Tameka Perry, was reportedly nine months pregnant and her baby was due to be born in about a week. Reports claim that in February 2017, Shanika's mother mentioned that Tameka, her neighbor was playing music too loudly at odd hours of the day. Acting on this information, Shanika confronted Tamika on two different occasions. The first was challenging her to a fight and threatening her with a weapon. According to various reports, on March 5, 2016, Shanika Minor confronted Tameka on the street with a semi-automatic weapon about the noise issue. However, Shanika's mother intervened and diffused the situation. Unsatisfied, Shanika walked away but was left feeling that her family had been disrespected. The second confrontation happened in the wee hours of the next day, a few hours after the first. At about 3 a.m. the next morning, Shanika Minor entered the Tamika's duplex through the common hallway, where the victim stood by her door. In an attempt to stop her daughter, Minor's mother put her body between the two women, but her efforts were a little too late. Shanika reached over her mother and shot Tameka in the chest, fatally injuring her. The victim returned to her house and died in front of her two little kids five days before her due date. Unfortunately, her unborn baby also died before the ambulance arrived. Shanika Minor fled the scene and remained at large for almost four months before the FBI included her in the most wanted fugitives list on June 28, 2016. In the early hours of July 1, 2016, three days after she was put on the list, Shanika S. Minor was apprehended in a motel in Fayetteville, North Carolina. She is currently serving a 30-year sentence for one count of first-degree reckless homicide of a child and one count of first-degree reckless homicide. Catherine Ann Power and Susan Edith Sachs. College roommates Catherine Ann Power and Susan Edith Sachs were both seniors at Brandeis University. On October 17, 1970, the unlikely duo became the first female pair to end up on the most wanted list, joining the company of other radical women who made the list for their politically motivated escapades. Throughout their stay in college, the radical roommates were active protesters against the Vietnam War and social ideologies such as sexism and racism. However, Catherine and Susan were not content being regular regular protesters, so the duo and three other accomplices hatched and executed a harebrained bank robbery scheme that claimed the life of a police officer and earned them their places on the FBI Most Wanted Fugitives list. Their goal was to steal enough money to purchase arms for the Black Panther Party in protest against the United States' involvement in the Vietnam War. Edith Sachs described herself as a lifelong radical activist with an intersectional outlook. She was a member of different politically inclined groups during her time at Brandeis University. Catherine Power was a sociology major. She was popular for her efforts in protest rallies, her involvement in the school's information center, and wandering brawless and barefoot around campus in an orange smock. Catherine and Edith worked for a committee known as the National Student Strike Force, organizing protests. Their activities and interests brought them in contact with Stanley Bond, an ex-convict who attended the university through a special program. Stanley Bond introduced them to two ex-convicts, Willem Gilday and Robert Valeri. Before long, the radical roommates became involved 
involved in a plot to purchase arms and ammunition for the Black Panther Party. On September 20th, 1970, Catherine Ann Power, Susan Edith Sachs, and their three accomplices robbed a National Guard armory in Newburyport, Massachusetts, carting away weapons and 400 rounds of ammunition, causing about $120,000 worth of damage to the facility. On September 23rd, 1970, the group, heavily armed with the weapons they stole three days ago, robbed a bank in Brighton, a neighborhood in Boston. As you may have guessed, things didn't go very smoothly. During the robbery, William Gilday shot and killed former World War II veteran and father of nine Walter Schroeder, who was the first police officer on the scene. Then they escaped with over $26,000 in cash. Catherine Power and Susan Sachs escaped while their accomplices were apprehended soon after. Some reports claim that a security camera identified Robert Valeri as one of the armed robbers that attacked the bank. Arrested later that day, Robert Valeri identified and implicated the other four in the Brighton robbery. Investigations led authorities to Catherine Power's apartment, where they discovered evidence that linked her to the National Guard armory robbery the previous week. After learning that the police were after them, the two women went underground and vanished. Soon after, the FBI listed them as two of the top ten most wanted fugitives. Catherine and Susan successfully evaded the authorities for several years, hiding in the houses of other radical members of the women's movement. They assumed new identities, put the past behind them, and moved on with their lives. In March 1975, Philadelphia police apprehended Susan Edith Sachs, who was living under the alias Aileen A. Hellman at the time. A passing police officer, armed with images of the fugitives released by the FBI on the same day, identified Susan, and after confirming her identity by fingerprints, she was arrested. She later pleaded guilty to charges of manslaughter and robbery, and was sentenced to 10 to 12 years in prison. On the other hand, Catherine Power successfully evaded the police for over two decades. In June 1984, the FBI took her off the most wanted list, despite the fact that she had not been caught. As a fugitive, Catherine Power, living under the name Alice L. Meetsinger, built a successful life for herself. She married her boyfriend of 13 years, became a teacher at the local community college, had a child, and opened a restaurant. Some claims say that life on the run became too hard for Catherine, as she suffered from depression and was in therapy due to the stress of her past. In 1993, Catherine Power negotiated her surrender and came out of hiding after 23 years, the record for the longest listed woman on the list. Before turning herself into the police, she threw a going away party for herself, well attended by her family and friends. She was later sentenced to 12 years in prison. Catherine served five of her 12-year sentence before being released on a 14-year probation. After her release, she returned to her family in Oregon, where she earned a master's degree and wrote several books about her experience. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to check our other similar and amazing videos on the screen. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.